The Cats did the D's in half-built ground with Jezza KO'd in game one of the round. Brisbane was strong, but the Saints didn't thrill, while Ross Lyon sat sweating and obviously ill. The Swans were ruthless and West Coast were lame. The first 200 in Sydney since Labuschagne. For the Bombers, Fremantle were too strong. And for the Hawks, the Sun Games went on a bit too long. For the Pies, it was deja vu. And for Benny Keys, maybe some poo. Despite the loss, respect for the Crows hasn't diminished. Frankly, we're all thankful that the bye rounds are finished. So that is where it sits at the moment. This is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub exclusively on the Listener app. Damien Barrett, Lee Montagna filling in again. Nathan Brown is here. And I feel a bit uneasy because a couple of seconds before I go to read out my poem day, mate. Yeah. You said, uh, uh, are you hosting, Joey? <laughs> and I'm like, well, he did sit over in the host chair over there and yeah. he was ready. He was ready to go. He had something written over there and I'm like, well, what am I, chopped liver over here? But I am here to host, Joey. <laughs> I think you? there's a power play going on again because uh, you're filling in for Dale Thomas, who's part of the regular midweek rub, or as you called it last week, the Weed meek rub. <laughs> um, so you got that part right tonight. But uh, yeah, Joey reassumed his normal uh, seating position. I thought you were going to take it over. Well, I just presumed I was too, but Brownie <laughs> self appointed host once again. But that's all right. I'm a team player. I'm happy to have Brownie hosting and nice to have you here again. Daisy's still in the in Royal Ascot, I think. We, uh, have we heard from him? We haven't. We try to get, do you know, do you know about this demo? We try to get uh, Daisy Thomas to send us an audio message for the Sunday rub just to find out how he's going. Yeah. Well, it was inaudible. They couldn't understand. <laughs> it was mumbling and he was blind. So then they said, can you text us something to read out? His text message didn't make sense either. <laughs> so we couldn't even use it on air. That's how well Daisy Thomas was going. Hey, does that surprise yeah. anyone? No, not no, at all. No, no not, not at all. No. He's having an absolute blast. I don't know about you, Damo, but obviously school holidays is a hard time. Not a hard time, it's a great time, but you've got to always have something to do. And it costs so much to do stuff with kids these days. And my wife goes away for 10 days soon, so I've got all the four kids out here today. And I've set them down and I've said, look, Jasper's in control today, so Jasper's out there. And I said that... Look at him. I want you to all look at him. He's got a mustache, kids, and he's been to jail. So if anybody does anything wrong, Jasper's going to be into him. But it is hard and work. And hasn't I, been to jail, by the way. I, no, he hasn't. I just said that to the kids. Is he some trouble last Friday night, though? But we won't go there. No, we no. won't go there, <laughs> Damo. That's a bit silly. Uh, but I asked Joey, and his wife is also going away. Yeah, and yes. Joey was the, the fact that I'm organising everything for my kids while my wife's away. This person to be here, this person to help out. That's when I'm doing football and, and sports bet stuff. But Joey, your wife has organised for somebody to be there every minute of every day to cook. That says to me, not a that lot of she trust. Doesn't trust <laughs> not a lot of trust there. I just got sent the itinerary because my wife is going to Europe at the end of the month, and it's like every single night she's either got her mother or her dad or my mum or even a family friend. And every single night for how many nights? For sixteen nights. Sixteen. Yeah. So we've got a bit of work on, but we can manage around it. But uh, it's all organised. I've only got the two kids too, Damo. You mm. look out there. Brandy's got seventeen. No wonder <laughs> Brandy works so hard. No wonder he fronts every uh, it's the, face of, the face of everything. You need to keep working. Brownie. It's expensive to have kids. Good looking well. kids too, Brownie. Yeah. Not, not, not a surprise knowing Christina and I, to it a doesn't matter extent they know whether they're good looking or they're not good looking. No, I'm behave. just lucky well enough to have good looking kids. They're well behaved. Strange thing to say they're from not, you. They're not trying to jump out windows tonight. No, no. Uh, they they can muck around a bit, but they're, they've been on their best behaviour. And I did say Jasper's in control. Jasper's been to jail. So you're taking them ten pin bowling. What are you going to do? We're going to go ten pin bowling after this, good. which is uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that as well. So, Damo. Yeah. You, Anything else, Joe? Uh, no, that's. I was going to ask Damo. You come in a bit bleary eyed. You've been to the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame last night. Yeah, we'll touch on it um, yep. a, a bit more extensively in a moment after the the first break, Joey. But uh, just another ripping night. They do it so well. Uh, another seven induct- inductees last night, and and your mate uh, Nick Revold, who accepted an induction, but will not be able to accept it formally until uh, until next year when he's back in Australia. So he was part of it last night as well. How long do Junos generally have to wait until they get inducted? Junos. Obviously, um, no, Junos won't be good. Bruce either. is a, a journalist of types, but yeah. got Me, inducted. I guess a wider, How yeah. long is it going to take for you, Damon? Uh, I'll be getting in that. Hall a long service to the game, though. <laughs> a long service to the game. You've put your body on the line many, many times. As we know, there's a lot of people who have tried to bash you. Yeah. Luke Beveridge is at, one at of those. Venue, actually, Scotty yeah. Clayton, <laughs> Justin Leppich. Yeah. You go through them, the Scott brothers. Yeah. Everybody's had a no, crack no, at only you. Only one Scott brother, and we're okay with that, that and one now. Does Damo go? Of those functions sometimes, like some of the underworld, where he sort of has to walk in with his back to the wall Absolutely. just to keep, just to keep an eye, wall. just to keep an was, eye out for the enemies. Um, he keeps making jokes about Luke Beveridge's teeth. <laughs> He's going to have to go back to the wall. That escalator between the, the ground floor there at Palladium to the top yes. to, to the function area. Can be a long escalator if you're in the wrong position on it, Joey. But I was, I was late last night for legitimate reasons, and it actually saved me that little small talk uh, part of it. So, who scared you more, Beveridge or Lepich? Uh, no, Beveridge. Beverage, yeah. even though if that 
If that Flying glass, glass hit you in the head, head yeah, I you would have been dead. Be here today, yeah. But um, no, the, <laughs> the, the other one worries me more. Have what a life been? you've got, Damo. Have you ever been to a Hall of Fame function? No. Would you like to go to one? Uh, yes, to see what it's all about. Yeah. I yeah. thought the same. I'd love to go. But we'd have to go as a plus one from someone. <laughs> we'd have to get an invite <laughs> one. We'll be about 95 <laughs> services at AFL, Joey. But uh, <laughs> hey, maybe one day. We're going to head to our first break. Damo, you've got some news coming up after this. This is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub. This is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub exclusively on the Lip Rap. Uh, Joey, we've got you, Damo. I forgot your name last week, so I got your name <laughs> right this week. But you went to the Hall of Fame, as we were discussed last night. Mark Williams, Michael Aish, Tom Lee, Sam Mitchell, Corey Enright, and Jimmy Bartel. We've already spoken about Rui. He's going to accept his award next year because uh, he's swanning himself over in the States at the moment. But what was the night like? It was, it was a ripper night, as it always is. I, what, what I constantly get amazed at is the uh, the awe with which the players who are, are being inducted um, are, are inside that room. I mean, Jimmy Bartel is one who always puts the chest out and presents as confident as anyone I think I know in the game. And yet last night he had those moments where he broke down, particularly when he started reflecting on his uh, on his accolade and, and particularly the, the mum component of that and the, the beautiful stories that he's always told about his mum. But um, just being in the room with other people and, and you saw uh, Sam Mitchell as well, similar to, to, to Jimmy, had, had moments of reflection that just had him pausing. I wanted to ask you about Mitch because I haven't seen the vision of Mitch, but I was telling you guys off air that as a player playing against him, I couldn't stand him, hated him even. <laughs> he was the one that you wanted to get in yeah. under the guard of. And why is that, Brownie? What? He just had that look on his head the whole time that he was hitting a bit, and he was a great player, uh, but he was annoying, and it annoyed me and it annoyed all the teammates. But as a coach, I love him. I've yeah. turned. I've, I've done a one eighty on Sam Mitchell from hating him as a player to loving him as a coach and what he's doing because I just love the way he goes about it. But what was he like? He was great too. Um, what, look, I, look. I when he started speaking, I was um, keen to see how he was going to or if he was going to address the name Alistair Clarkson. He just chose not to. Um, it's in keeping with Sam Mitchell. And then to, to to think that he could talk about what made him an all, a Hall of Fame inductee last night. And to not mention the man who made him captain in the first of those four premierships, who played in the four premierships. But we know the relationship. And I, I, look, I don't say that as a criticism. I think it's, it's just an endorsement of who Sam Mitchell is, how he wants to present, and how he's prepared to be seen by others. And not referencing Clarkson in that moment. And, and had he referenced him, it actually would have been out of keep. With, um, with Was the main keeping. relationship breakdown when he questioned him about getting a kick in finals? Well, that's been referenced in his own book, yeah. But but he's also chosen to to take that story as well, um, Brownie, and, and and relay it to other people when he's presenting to them as a sign of adversity. And there was an acknowledgement of him performing or not performing in grand finals last night as as well. I mean, he always performed in the big games outside of a grand final. The last two, though, you couldn't say that about him. And and even Luke Hodge, who did the beautiful presentation to him um, as part of the setup to Mitchell coming on stage, uh, he did reference even that 2013 grand final where in the last quarter he he hit the scoreboard when they needed to. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the night. I, I watched it all. It's, um, I mean, it's now starting to become like my era. We're all getting inducted. Another two from the Super Draft. So Sam Mitchell and, and Jimmy Bartel. I've sort of done some numbers. I think by the end of this, Super Draft might have seven or eight Hall of Famers in it when you include Jarden Hodge and Gary Ablett Jr., maybe Stevie J. So um, it's sort of nice to see the players that's, uh, that I played against. And the other one, Corey Enright, who I'm on record of saying he was the toughest opponent I ever played against, if everyone mm. asked that question, because he was such a good player offensively, but also he could defend. And I played as that high half forward, and I was trying to go and kick Chase Brownie, but at the same time, I had to make sure he didn't drop off and take 10 intercept marks and, and set up all the play. And of course, you know, some, some others as well, Mitchell and Bartel was in, in my draft. So I really enjoyed the night. Uh, I love hearing the stories. And you're right about those young, or those the younger guys that, that got inducted being in awe of the those players in there because they're your heroes as a kid. They're the they're the players you you idolise when you're a youngster, and all of a sudden you're in the same company as them. Mm. That would be quite a surreal feeling, as they all expressed last night. How long until Stevie J gets in? Oh, he might. Have, oh, I don't know. That's a hard question to answer. He might have to. Great wait record. A little bit. He would. She, Unbelievable his record. Record qualifies. And I must admit, when he read the paper of the hundred top earners last week, his comment was: "Looking at these players, most of these wouldn't have tied up my bootlaces." <laughs> <laughs> but Geelong players did have to take less. And, um, and then it's always good the older player, like the older inductees, speak really well. So Michael Ace and Choco Williams. He was both great. Very good both for, great. for different reasons, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Mark, Mark Williams is great. And as mad endorsed... as he is, my, uh, Choco, he he looks like someone you'd love to be coached by. Yep, He's got yep. a real energy and an enthusiasm. And if you're on his side, you're on his side for life. You'd go to war with him, wouldn't you, yep. in, in that sporting sense. Um, Adam Simpson's someone who's always been able to uh, fight the adversity. He's in a real battle at the moment. Uh, just take a listen to, to what he said during the week uh, earlier about the, the Eagles' latest plight. 
the fix is not a clean one. It's a long term. Getting players available, getting experience in the younger players and getting our senior players to play to their potential, that's my job. And I'll keep chasing that for as long as I can. If there's one thing they are doing well as a club, it is just uh, denying, pushing back on, on everything that's being said about them outside of their own operations, and that is that change has to happen. I've got no doubt change will happen, but what I'm now reading into this is that they're just going to try and do everything they can to keep the people in place until completion of round 23, and that's when they'll pull the whole thing apart. That's just my take on this. He's certainly defiant on that. Trevor Nisbet still hasn't been seen and nor heard of. Now, he was there last night in the room at the Hall of Fame, but he hasn't been seen um, speaking about this latest plight uh, recently, and he uh, will be part of that the potential change as well. So, uh, uh, that's where they're at as a footy club. Do you admire their plan? They're sticking to their plan because we've spoken about the Ken Hinckley plan and mm. you've been a big advocate. Hey, if that's your plan, stick to it. Don't let the outside noise or the, the, the results affect it. Is yeah. it something in a different way? Do you admire that at least they're sticking to their plan despite everyone externally trying to nah, make, a, make a different plan? I, I don't, Joey, because this one's broken. This club is broken. Um, three wins now out of 40 matches. This review that, that we on the outside are calling for could have happened any, and should have happened probably two years ago. Was their fitness coach the early scapegoat, Warren Coford? Now, yeah. I'll put my hand up. He's, he is a mate of mine, so I've known him for a long time. There for 15 years, which is a long time to be in any one job at any one club, but got them to a premiership, another grand final. 15 years is a long time, but he seems like the easy one to put out as a scapegoat early. Yeah, it does to me too. It's not going to cut it, though, from the from a changing or potential and, and a hope that it changes the narrative. It's not going to do that. It's um, it's somebody that no one really knows outside of the, the football nuffies when it comes to the operations of a footy club. But I expect there to be more, Brownie. And, and back to your point, Joey, I mean, I've endorsing and, and been really supportive of what Port Adelaide has done because of the energy it's created and, and the results that are coming, I think, partially on the back of this unknown. But... When you're dealing with Adam Simpson and Trevor Nisbet, who have now got contracts that go way beyond this particular season and the record that they've both been contributing to being so poor, you have to have a look at your operations if um, when those things happen. And, and they're refusing to at this stage, at least by way of their commitments to it publicly. So do we know what the contract situation is? Is there a, a clause where Adam Simpson gets paid out or doesn't get paid out? It'll be up to his own management and negotiation skills. Um <sighs> Football clubs have been able to sack coaches now with a six-month only payout. I reckon there'd be a respect element for Adam Simpson, given what he's done to them. Two grand finals um, at his time at the club, one winning one, one losing one. This club right now, um, money's never been an issue with it. They, they can pay above the soft cap if they need to, Brownie, and cop a tax hit on it, 100% tax hit on it. I would expect them to not pay out two years of it if they make the decision to part with him, but they'd give him a nice payout. We're getting rid of the buy demo next year because I don't think, I haven't heard anybody who likes the buy. Uh, no, I, I think the clubs need the buy. It's just how Why? it looks. Uh, I've spoken to quite a few coaches in the past six or eight weeks, Brownie, and, and I'm yet to speak to one who doesn't want the buy. Um, I think you were referring to the, the the team coming off the buy, playing a team that played the previous week when it comes to the, the zero from eight record in that. But, I don't even really care about that, Dave. I just care about. about have you forgotten as a player how hard it is? You I just care about the fact that we've got four weeks of football, which is all disjointed. I'd but, love to play just straight through. But you're getting that from a media no person, aren't you? Uh, not, not as a player. I mean, and as a supporter. Do you think the supporters like these buy rounds at the moment? No, you're talking about the four On weeks. On Saturday by. last week, we didn't have a game until 4.30. No, no, this is a separate conversation about where how it looks, but the players need a buy, surely. Over a 24-week season, they need a buy. Do they need a buy or do they yes, just need to manage, need manage their players well, better? Well, what would you have, okay, what have, would you rather? Not have a buy and then throughout the season, having your best players having a week off here and there for the fans or just having a week off where all the players can rejuvenate? I think you could manage themselves. your players. I think you could manage a few in and out. I, oh, okay, the the like coaches I've spoken off. to off the record, the, I mean, some are saying that getting the buy, as some did last week in, in round 15, is too late mm. um, f- for the rest period. And, and the season's already set in, 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 a, in, a, in a cast sense. So, yeah, look, I think the four what weeks. What other sports the last day, Mo, have a four-week buy? But it's not a four-week buy. It's just spread over four weeks for one. Each yeah. team gets a buy over a four-week period. So a different conversation. I, I don't disagree with you when it comes to do you, are you sucking the life out of momentum yeah and, and we've had an Ashes series we've had a world championship test match before that we've also had the state of origin rugby league mm. in the in this same four, period, four week period so I think it's all going to be factored in I'd be surprised if it's over four weeks next year I reckon it'll be over two and yeah. just back on the specifics of the results where the fresh team has been playing a team that played the previous week they're going zero eight 
I would argue that, that seven of those eight results went to the team favoured in the match. Now, the one outlier, outrider, would be the Hawthorne defeat of Brisbane Lions. That's the one that I think anyone picked. But the next closest game to the, the unknown was, was the Gold Coast playing Carlton and when Carlton kicked the nine goals in the so second quarter. You're saying it's as expected. Yeah. I'm saying it's as expected. I'm not saying it's actually costing football clubs results coming off the bye. Yep. Yeah, there's, there may be an element, absolutely, uh, of that anomaly. I think, well, Fremantle came off the bye against Richmond and lost at home. Uh, but again, it was line ball that game. Yeah, it was. It well, was line ball. We all tip free hours our moral. But yes, <laughs> uh, you're right. There is coming. Maybe the Geelong-Melbourne game as well. So look. I do think it's one of those years where it's been a bit of an anomaly because I don't yep. think history, I think it's what 47% win rate or something yep. like that coming off the buy. So there has been a bit of an anomaly. We like the numbers, but uh, I just think, Brandy, we can do it over two weeks or one week and then we can continue to move yeah, on. Yeah, might be mm-hmm. Just quickly before we um, get into Fair Dinkum and or Fagazi, and then we'll also preview the games. Um, this Gold Coast-Collingwood game on Sunday, it's quite easy to mount the case. This is the most important game of this club's AFL life, the Suns. Uh, back in 2014, they played the same team and, and Gary Ablett played for a part of the game. He went down in the game, didn't play again that year. They missed the, the, the finals on the back of a good start to the year. They'll get 24,000 there or thereabouts on, on Sunday. It's basically a full house. How many of them will be Collingwood supporters? Reckon? They've got a big yeah. supporter base, <laughs> Collingwood. I reckon yeah. at least 70% will be Collingwood supporters that go to that game. And I agree, it's a massive game for the Gold Coast, but so too it was a massive game against Carlton mm. when they played them and they didn't turn up. Playing at home is different, but how can they distinguish between away and home at the moment? You just can't trust them at the moment. So Collingwood, for me, comfortably. This will only be the biggest game of their career if they win. If they, win. If yeah. they lose, it's just another one <laughs> no, of those Gold Coast oh, games. they're a good side, Collingwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did our best. Yeah, that's it. And here we go again, Gold Coast. Rudy, I forgot your name last week. I apologise <laughs> about that, but this is your segment. Now on the Midweek Rub, it's... Thanks, Branny. I'll um, head straight back to you for the first one, mate. Uh, if the season were to stop today, Tex Walker would be the All-Australian full forward. Fagazi for me. I still think that Tom Hawkins at the moment is the All-Australian full forward. Texas kicked 15 in the last two weeks. Ten of those were against West Coast. Five against Collingwood was a brilliant performance. But week in, week out, Tom Hawkins at the moment. Anyone else want to jump oh, in? Or? I, was, I was trying to think. It's a tough one. It, it really is a tough one. I mean, Tom Hawkins kicked eight against Essendon. In one game, Charlie Kernos kicked 10 or 9 in one game against West Coast. So you've sort of got to factor that in. So otherwise, like, because that was my first thought, Tex Walker's kicked 10 against West Coast. It doesn't count. But the other considerations have all done the same. Mm. So I think he has to be considered. Oh, I think I would have him in the team right now. Yeah. Well, he's leading the Coleman. Yeah. And, and that usually means all Australians. So, yeah, I'm going to go fair dinkum if you're asking me, mm. Rudy. Yeah. Good one, Rudy. Good start. Thank you. Uh, Joey, I'll uh, go to you with this one. Oh, Gary Rowan oh my gosh. should have been suspended for his hit on Jeremy Cameron. <laughs> oh, my God, Rudy. Anyone who follows too much social media, the only ones that think this is actually like legitimately possible. <laughs> yeah. This is the biggest Fagazi that we've ever had in this <laughs> Fagazi fan income. Seriously, what a joke. Yeah. People thinking you should get suspended for accidentally clipping your teammate. What was he doing, though, Gary Rowan? Trying to get like, out of the way. Uh, uh, how was he trying to get He ran into him. <laughs> no, he, like, he got yeah. Jeremy Cameron coming out with a player yeah. on him, and uh, like, he played well after it, yeah. and he did uh, such a great job. But he just came across and <laughs> smacked him with his shoulder. <laughs> he had no peripheral vision no, at all. Until the last he shouldn't second. have been there. Yeah, until the last second. Then he tried to get out of the way and made it worse. So you're saying it's fair dinkum? Um, I'm not saying it's fitting. I'm just saying that he should not have actually <laughs> touched him in the first place. Okay. Damo, I'll go to you with this one. Damien Hardwick will 100% be coaching an AFL side in round one, 2024. Uh, you've got to answer it right now. I'm going to say for Gazi. I just cannot see a team that presents right now. Um, the vulnerability is on Stuart Dew at the Gold Coast, but if they get through this game we just spoke about and we'll talk about it again in a moment, um, that's probably not going to happen. So uh, for Gazi, for me on that one, just right now. Do you think it's probable? I think it's possible. Yeah, possible. Possible. So yeah. less than 50% if you did a sort of law. Go, go through the simple. clubs. Yeah, through, I agree. No, yeah. I agree. there's no club at the yeah. moment. I, you probably think it's probable, but he might just have to wait another 12 months until there's an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what will happen though, if, if, if one club gets an awareness that another club is asking the question of him, that's when panic sets in. That's the Essendon situation of last year where they sacked Ben Rutten because they knew that Clarkson was about to sign with North. Let's get in the race before we lose the possibility on that. Only then, when there's two horses in the race, will it become a, a stronger possibility. You'd be yeah. mad not to think that legacy and your coaching record comes into it as well. So, obviously, the West Coast job possibly should come up. 
would Damien Hardwick go, nah, I'm not going there. Is it, legacy it was or brought workload? up on footy or, or classified. Workload. Yeah, is it, I mean, legacy, yes, but workload, that, that's an immense task, isn't it? To, to set that club up now. Absolutely. Yeah. I ask you, Brandy, if you're Damien Hardwick and the West Coast job hy- hypothetically is available, do you take it or do you wait 12 months and see if there's a, another prospect? What would you do? I'd be waiting, but what I do know is the West Coast Eagles will eventually get it right. They're a big mm. club with big money, and he could set himself up so he has to work the rest of his life if he takes a job at the West Coast Eagles, yeah. knowing that, okay, we're going to give you two years to develop this group. Year three, we need some sort of results coming forward, whether it's pushing to finals, somewhere around finals, but we need to see something. So you've got a big five-year contract knowing that that is big money and looking after the West Coast Eagles. So would, you, so would you take the money and take the hard gig? Or oh, would you I've wait? been known to take the money in the past, shall we? So <laughs> why not? Let's take it again. Uh, Brownie, I know you Sunday Rub guys have watched quite a few of these over the last couple of seasons, but I put it to you that Collingwood are the best team we've ever seen at managing tight finishes. Yeah, absolutely. I think they are. I, I can't remember... Obviously, haven't been through the history of how many clubs have been in that position, but 11 of 15 now when trailing by three-quarter time to be able to handle that situation. I don't think there's been an exciting history has been able to do it more consistently. Mm. Um, and it just speaks volumes of the playing group, not, not only the coach, but the playing group to be able to do it because the coach sets it up, but the players have to enact it out on the ground when it is late. Time and time again, they get it right. And yet, weirdly, the two finals they lost yeah. last year were by yep. six points yep. in a qualifying final and one point in a prelim. Yep. yep. Oh, Captain Negative Damo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joey, sticking with that game, uh, Ben Keys ripping off Mason Cox's glasses was just an innocent mistake. <laughs> That's for Gazi too. That was deliberate. Uh, I love how he tried to pretend it wasn't. Bit of fear, Dart, and there was nothing. There was no harm in it. It was just a bit of you know, a bit of fear, and he cops his thousand bucks, and uh, away we move. Says a, a bloke who doesn't wear glasses. When you, when you oh. say there's no harm in it. Was there harm in it? When you take a person who needs glasses, take the glasses off their head, yeah, there's harm. Wow. You can't see. They can't see. Well, they're, they're, they're it's protect, pretty basic. They're they can't see. They're protective glasses, aren't they? They protect his eyeball. They're not I, because he can't, he's I blind think a bit without them. He didn't yeah. have glasses before. That was it Tony yeah. Bahaja who ripped off Bruce Duell's headband. headband. Was yeah, it the headband. Yeah. yeah. It was a famous moment, wasn't it? It went berserk yeah. with Bruce Duell, didn't <laughs> he? He lost his way. But what I do like is, is Mason Cox theatrics, though. When he kicked the goal and he strutted in, he gave nothing in the first goal. Yeah. Stevie Johnson thought he was going to give it. Watch Mason here. Watch Mason. Second goal, he certainly gave it. And I love the fact that he comes with that. Um, can you imagine him trying to do that in US sport though? Like, <laughs> let me just like, off, you, off you go, Mason. Brownie, I've got one more out of that game, which I'm going to give to you. Mm. I've got some audio first. Late in the game, there's probably only a minute and a half to go, but the ball was out on the outer wing, the shame worn stand, and John Noble had to come up with two oh. big tackles. If they had got through him, there was players out everywhere, but stuck both the tackles. Yeah, it sort of reminded me a bit of Marty Matner in the 2012 Granny when he did it on that outer wing. It was uh, yes, very Marty reminiscent Matner. of that. Now, N- Nick Dacos's Marty Matner <laughs> reference yeah. proves just how big a footy nuff he is. <laughs> okay, Nick Dacos has the best footy IQ in the competition at his age. The best footy IQ. To be able to come up with Marty Matt is one thing, and that's just a bit weird. But in the game, when he got the 50-metre penalty down the ground to kick the goal, Mm. most players wouldn't have even known the rules that much that he went and protested the umpire and said, that should be 50-metre penalty. Then the umpire said, actually, it should be. Then blew the whistle, then paid the 50-metre. Brody Majek was already having a shot at goal. Nick Dacos got it 30 metres closer. You know what? Because he watches footy. It's, we've referenced Stevie J a few times. Stevie J's pet hate is the amount of players that are almost brag that they don't watch any footy. Yeah. And then they wonder why they don't know the, the little intricacies, when you can handball for a rush behind, yeah. when you can do all these things. But because Nick Dacos is a footy nuffy, he's mm. across everything. And that's why he's the smart. He's going to take over from Pendles as the smartest footballer in the competition. Damo, I've uh, already spoken a little bit about Tex here, but uh, I've got another one on him. They play West Coast in round 24, Adelaide. Yep. If he's within six goals of the Coleman, pencil him in. Fair dinkum, yeah. Yeah, the, the way he kicked the 10 last time, they were really good goals. And, and, and his teammates didn't necessarily actually look for him to help him kick those. I reckon if they knew a Coleman was on the line, as there was with... Um, with that attempt by Carlton players to get Fev across the line in the yep. same game as Buddy back in 2008. I reckon it'll be game on. So fair dinkum on that one. Plays North Melbourne Ruth. at home this week too, so it could be a fill your boots. Ooh. Only thing it's going to cost Tex is if they need percentage to maybe climb the ladder and they just have to worry about winning and winning well rather than feeding Tex. But if it's not going to change their ladder position, yep, he'll win it for sure. Brownie, 
if Channel 9 make a TV show about Damo's feuds, like they did Ian Chappell and Ian Botham's, <laughs> they'll have 20 years worth of programming. Absolutely. That is uh, fair income. Fair income for me because there's just a list of people that hate Damo and want to fight Damo. I've passed not only both of, most of football, them up, really. but it's just and, and most of them are hard bastards too, like, like real hard-headed people who can fight Damo. Who's you scary. take on a lot of people who can fight, so you've always got to find the ones that Brown, can't fight. I've patched nearly all of them up except for one. Okay, so we're actually okay in that space right now. Have you ever now. tried to patch up the one with Bebo? Uh, early days I did and then gave up and now I don't care and don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yep. One last one <laughs> for, for you, Joey. Um, comes with a little bit of audio. We're trying to build out our list, build out our form. You have exploration. I keep finding out. I found out a lot about individuals tonight. I absorb it all, process it, but we're pretty keen to turn it around. I know we're better than that. <laughs> Ross Lyon needs to learn that it's okay to take sick leave. <laughs> no, that'll never get through. No, that's for Garzi. He will never take sick leave. Uh, he sounded like Barry White, didn't he? It was quite... Uh, I liked it. That was fine. He did a good job. Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> of all the names. <laughs> Time to talk about the games and the game predictions. The first one on Thursday night is a massive game. Brisbane up against Richmond. They played in the final last year. You might remember Tom Lynch kicked the goal that was disallowed that looked like a goal then overturned and massive news up in Brisbane. But this is huge. I'm going to stick with Brisbane. I, I really like what they did last week. Uh, they've still got this point to prove and they, they still want to finish top two in order to get the, the home Gabba finals. It's a key plank of that. I, I'm loving equally what Richmond's doing with the interest in the competition to try and get into the eight from outside it right now. But I'm going to take the soft option, Brownie. Lions. It's been a good build-up with Richmond, as in they're the team that are coming, but they're already a game and a half out of the eight. If they lose this, it makes it really hard, and it's going to be hard to see them beating Brisbane at home, who hardly ever lose. So I think you have to go Brisbane. You have to go Brisbane at the Gabba. Richmond playing good football, but Brisbane at the Gabba. This is a massive one on Friday night as well. Yeah. Sydney mm. boosted their percentage. Geelong coming hard, 7-7. Seven and seven. The spot in the eight is up for grabs over the next couple of weeks. This is going to be an interesting one. I'm leaning towards the Cats. I think that I'm not buying that game from Sydney, obviously against West Coast. I think the Geelong have beaten them up in the midfield the last two times, the grand final, and when they played early in the year, they smacked them. If Dangerfield plays, we expect Danger to play as yeah. we speak. As we speak, Damon, as Brownie? we speak. Am I allowed to as say that? Speak? As we speak. If you say it for me, <laughs> we expect him to play. As we speak, he's <laughs> yeah. going to play. Then if Dangerfield plays, I'm going to tip the Cats. I'm going Geelong too. I think they're going pretty well at the moment. Geelong for me. Yeah, same. Adelaide, North Melbourne. It's already spoken about Tex maybe filling his boots. Yep. Yeah, I think it's obvious what we're going to do there. Bulldogs, Fremantle. I, I find this one fascinating. Fremantle bounced back against the Bombers last week. The Dogs, I think, are just going at the moment. Yeah, you know, the odds I found, dis- the, the discrepancy in the odds is big. And this Bulldogs are short price favourites, yep. which is surprising to at me. Home. I think, uh, is that Marvel? But if Fremantle bring their best, which we've seen five out of seven games yep. now, I think the Dogs uh, might not get the job done. I'm going to tip Fremantle again. I love the way they're going about it. I'm going to jump in early and make Fremantle my certainty for the round to beat the Bulldogs, even though they certainty are the, the outsiders round. and certainty. Frio, yep. the outsiders, yep. Damo's certainty of the round. Hold, hold that to me. I'm going Frio that. as well. I was going to have them as a value pick yeah, this weekend, but Frio being the outsiders, I think they win. Gold Coast, Collingwood. Remember last year, Gold Coast probably should have won this game. Up in the Gold Coast, it was one of those comebacks from the Pies. Uh, there was a few free kick decisions that didn't go Gold Coast way, but it's hard to keep tipping. You can't tip against Collingwood. So until the Gold Coast prove it to me, I'm tipping the Pies. I might just go for the story on this one and pick their sons. It'd be a good story. So uh, sons for me. It just feels like some games you look at and you yeah. go, that could be a game that could trip Collingwood up. Yeah. So many close games. Mm-hmm. Playing great football, they go away. I thought last week was that one. I tipped Adelaide last the week. Yeah. Demo, you did. You know, you can mm. just take your eye off a little bit, but Collingwood don't seem to do that. So I'm going to tip Collingwood. Just Essendon, Port Adelaide. This is my certainty, Port Adelaide. Uh, I'm not convinced about the Bombers yet. Their work without the ball uh, is leaving a lot to be desired. I don't know how they're going to get the ball back off Port Adelaide when they start with the ball. So I think Port are my certainty. Been riding this port uh, train now since round four, Brownie. Not jumping off for this game. So uh, I feel like they row. have to lose at one point. <laughs> they have to lose yeah. one game, and if it is Essendon, mm. who I was pretty disappointed with last week, but they should have started that game a lot better last week against Freo. So they dominated the first twelve or so minutes. weren't able to put it on the scoreboard. Do they get scoreboard pressure and then put Fremantle under pressure? I'm going to tip the Bombers in an upset. Fair call. Fair call. Good reason too. Hawthorne Carlton. No idea. Yeah. Um, depends which team for both of them show up. 
You have to go Carlton, but I'm not doing that with any confidence. Yeah, I, I just look at the the two really good performances from Hawthorne. Had Sicily best on ground against yeah. St Kilda and Brisbane. He's still got this game against Carlton and next week to miss. So Carlton for that reason. No, I don't think they can win without James Sicily. Yep. Too important yep. to them. I'm going to make Melbourne up against the Giants my certainty. I just think Melbourne were pretty ordinary last week and they'll want to respond Melbourne for me. Hey, just on that, before you, are we worried about Melbourne? I am. Five losses already out of the 14. I'm worried about their forward structure. Yep. I, I think their midfield's fine. I think they can get enough of the football. Their rucks will sort themselves out. Everyone's talking about that. Their defensive aspects are great, but their forward line. Are they, they great? Have so, they come off a little bit, the defensive part of it? I, I think no. when it counted against Collingwood a few weeks ago, you saw how good they were. Yeah. But the only problem was their forward structure. They're kicking to Bailey Fritch, who's no bigger than you, Damo. Um, probably even skinnier, if you could believe that, Bailey Fritch. <laughs> But He's got better hair. Kicking him to one-on-ones <laughs> over and over, it is not going to work. They've got Van Ruin down there who they're going to persevere with. But we had this discussion leading into a premiership that they won, and they blew us away. And Tom McDonald played well. Ben Brown played well. They don't have those two at the moment. It's slightly different take. I think it's their ball movement that's costing them. Their ball movement isn't allowing any forward structure. It isn't allowing Bailey's Fritch to get off his man. They're going slow. They're going wide. They're doing going back to what cost them last year. So if mm. they can get back to the ball movement at the start of the year where they did change angles a bit more, a bit more free-flowing, then I think the forwards will get better looks. So I, th- I think I've still got faith they can turn that around, but we want to start to see it yeah, pretty okay. soon. I've got Melbourne in this game, Brownie, but I do have my doubts about them, big picture. And the last game is West Coast up against St Kilda. <sighs> 50 points, under over? <laughs> or is it, you reckon? Under over 50 it, points. It would, well, that's what it's been for, yeah, on average. It'd be about oh, 10 yeah. goals. Yeah. Last week it was 56 against Sydney, the over-under line. Was it? Yeah. And they blew it away by times three and a bit. How competitive yeah. will West Coast be this week? Well, we've been asking that every week, haven't we? Yeah, right. uh, and I listened to Adam Simpson, the, the grab you through before. My job is to get our senior players to play well. Unfortunately, your senior players aren't playing well. And some of the highlights we've shown, the senior players are some of the worst. I think the only consistent one so far has potentially been Tim Kelly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, recapping, so what's your certainty and your outsider, Brownie? So my outsider is the Bombers and my certainty is Melbourne. Uh, well, I'm going to go with Fremantle as my certainty as an outsider. And as I said, I'm going to go for the Gold Coast Suns equally as an outsider as uh, as my fun bet for the week. I like it. I'll go Fremantle as my outsider against the Bulldogs and Port Adelaide to beat Essendon as my certainty. Catch every game across round 16 on Triple M, starting with tomorrow night's blockbuster clash between Brisbane and Richmond, live from the Gab at 7pm with BT, Liam Flanagan, Simon Black, Brett Thomas and Ethan Meldrum. It's been good to be in the chair for a couple of weeks. Would have been a ratings boost. Thanks for having me, boys. You're finished though. Yeah, that's it. I I think Daisy's back next week, yes. We might get you back for finals, Brownie. Get you back for Join, finals. Yeah, get an extra one in here. Big get game us. performer, big yep. time performer. That's I like it. it. Thank you, Damo. Joey. Signing off. Signing off. This has <laughs> been Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub exclusively on the Listener app. This has been Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub with Joey Montagna, Daisy Thomas and Damian Barrett. Follow Triple M Footy on socials to get the latest news and highlights and to live stream games or listen anytime, download the Listener app, L-I-S-T-N-R.